guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Tintle and I am the owner and designer behind the Creative Siren. So this week we are just doing a kind of a mini tutorial um, in light of the recent holiday. I wanted to keep it festive and you know patriotic but also not like overly patriotic. I wanted it to be somewhat feminine but not super in your face. So this week I thought I would teach you guys how to go the easy way about making polymer clay flowers. So look at how gorgeous this looks, right? I'm like so obsessed, um, totally, you know, patriotic and fun for 4th of July or for whatever you want to use it for, but it's got a really subtle hint of, you know, just the feminine and, um, you know, it's just not like overly in your face, which I totally, totally love. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you today how to do these flowers. Um, they're so simple. I um, used a, like a, a, a flower press or they call it a veiner. Um, I know it sounds silly, <laughs> but it's the same technique that I used when I would make flowers um, for cakes, for cake decorating. So out of fondant or gum paste, we would do something similar. Now I have added the veiner that I'm using. It comes with um, cookie cutters to go with it so you can portion out the, uh, the size of your petals just right. And I will put that in the description below so you don't miss it. Now, before I start all like jumping into the flowers and all of this, I will preface this with, um, at the beginning of this tutorial, you will see that right away we are epoxying a cup. And that's because I spray painted it black and of course we know that polymer clay and spray paint don't mix so we have to add a layer of epoxy to protect the two from reacting poorly with each other and you'll see it looks really good but you'll want to get that out of the way before you jump into your polymer clay flowers that way when your flowers are done you have something to glue it to anyways with all of that being said let's go ahead and just jump right in guys we're hitting the ground running here and we're gonna go ahead and spray paint a fully prepped and sanded tumbler and then we're going to immediately epoxy it now I've added a little bit of glitter from PDB glitters here just so it shines like the night sky and that's literally what we're going for and we're putting just a very very thin layer of epoxy and as soon as you've done that go ahead and hit it with some heat to remove any of those pesky micro bubbles. Now while your epoxy is curing, go ahead and roll out a piece of white clay and we're just gonna cut it into a rectangle and that just makes life easier. You could probably go with doing one that's a little bit smaller than what I've got here um, because it just depends on how many stars that you wanna make. And then go ahead and bake that guy once you get him to the size that you like. Um, just be sure that you do not use Sculpey 3 or Sculpey Original for this because it'll be too brittle. You'll want to use something a little bit more flexible. Now for the next part here, you're going to want to roll out some blue clay or whatever color that you want to use. And we're going to pull out that veiner and the cookie cutters that it comes with. Now right away, I'm using the smallest petal cutter and then the next smallest petal cutter. Um, just to create our flowers. Um, you can go any size, but because we're putting it on the cup, I did want to keep it on the smaller size, so that's why I'm using these smaller two cutters. Once you're done cutting out all of your petals, peel away any excess clay, and once you've removed that, separate out your petals and then grab a little piece of white clay and we're gonna start forming the center of our flower. Now, I like to think of it of just like a little button that's like on a column. So you don't want it too big, about the size of your thumb, I guess, the very top of your thumb, um, and then thin it out down towards the bottom. So you literally just have like this little round button or ball at the top that's flat. Um, and then the rest is very thin. 
Now grab your vayner and just put your petals in there and squish them. Don't squish too hard because um, that'll actually rip your clay. So just gentle pressure and that'll be enough to get it looking like a petal. And just to start, we're just gonna do the smaller petals first and you'll see why in just a second. When you've squished all of your petals, start arranging them in a circle or as close to a circle as you can get. I do kind of mess up here and you'll see um, that it's not very circular at all. So just rearrange them until you get them to start going in that circular motion. And then you'll grab your center and just start rolling your petals. You don't want to um, have these petals be too tight as you roll it around. Um, just very loosely roll them. And then just jump right into squishing your larger petals and we're gonna do the very same thing. Again, form those petals in a circular uh, fashion. And then we'll grab our flower piece that we've already rolled up and gently roll it around the larger petals and try to offset it a little bit so it looks really natural. Once you get your petals how you like them, go ahead and pinch the very bottom so that the excess blue and then that white dangly piece are all pinched together because we're going to start cutting off the end here in just a second and you'll want all of your pieces put together. And then flare out your petals any which way that you like them. I like to bend them and curve them so that they look more natural. Now here I'm adding some mica flakes to the ends because in this uh, cup I really want my flowers to kind of represent fireworks. So I just wanted to give them this little extra touch of pizzazz. Now here is where we are going to cut off that excess before we place it on a blank tumbler to bake. Just grab your polymer clay blade and try your best to cut as straight across as possible. And then go ahead and place it on your tumbler. It doesn't really matter where, we just want the bottom of this to hold that curvature shape so it sits on your tumbler really nicely later. Now here's the optional part. You can go ahead and do the same process that we did with the blue flower and just make a red flower or you can be extra like me and make a red and white striped flower and this is how we're going to do it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take pieces of red and white clay and we're going to roll them out into thinner ropes. You're going to want your ropes to be roughly about a fourth of an inch thick. Now here I decided to cut this white this way. I don't know why I did it that way. It made it way more difficult but you just roll it out. Um, it really doesn't matter if it's deformed. See, now I cut it better that way. I got smarter. <laughs> and you want it to be, like I said, about a fourth of an inch, and we're just gonna stack these colors right on top of each other. It really doesn't matter how many strands of red and white that you do, just as long as you keep this pattern. I think I did roughly um, three white and three red, maybe four red. So it wasn't too thick. Um, okay, I lied, so it was like four, four and five. Um, and then I just put it through my pasta machine. Now this pasta machine is dedicated just to my polymer clay, but it definitely makes um, conditioning and rolling out your clay a lot easier. And look at how straight those lines are because they come straight out of the pasta machine like that. Now just lay your clay out flat and start making your flower just like we did the blue one, using your smaller cookie cutter and then your larger one. And make sure that your stripes are going in the same direction. You don't want to have horizontal stripes and then vertical stripes, it would just look messy. And just like before, put them in your flower press and that way you've got these really awesome uh, red and white petals.
Now here it's really important for me to fit these two right next to each other and bake them that way because then you'll have an idea of how you want them to sit on your actual cup and that way they form to each other. Now go ahead and bake your flowers following the directions on the back of your packaging. And now we come back to that baked piece of white clay and I'm taking this little star template that I have and I will have this uh, linked in the description. It's going to be available to my Facebook group members. Um, and it's about a half an inch star and I am just tracing it out on my piece of polymer clay. I like to use a pencil here because I can erase the pencil marks if I want to later. Though we're going to be covering these with glitter so it really doesn't matter and it won't show through. Now for the sake of this tutorial I'm just cutting out four for you guys so you guys can see it but I'm, I think I did around 20 to 25 in all and that'll just depend on how many you want to put on your cup. Now this is why I tell you that it's really important that we don't use Sculpey 3 or Sculpey Original. Um, because we want that flexibility that other um, polymer clays give us here so that we can slice right through it. If you don't have an X-Acto knife, you can absolutely use a pair of scissors and just cut these little stars out. After I've cut out my stars, I am just taking a little bit of poly acrylic and I'm brushing that very lightly over the top of my stars. I'm using a needle tool to hold them in place so I don't get it all over my hands. And I'm taking some PDB Glitters Coachella and I'm pouring it over the top and this gives it the perfect amount of sparkle. Now I picked them up from this pile of glitter just because I don't want to get it all over my hands and I'm going to very gently pick them up and then tap the back so that any excess glitter falls off. Now I didn't show it here, but after these were dry with their first coat of polyacrylic, I did add a second one to really seal in that glitter so it doesn't come off. Now that your flowers are thoroughly baked and cooled, we're going to start placing them on our cup. Um, you'll see here that I do have a decal on my cup already, but disregard that because I actually didn't like how I had it, so I ended up peeling it off. But I'm just using a little bit of E6000 on the backs of my flowers here and placing them where I want to and then letting them dry completely before I epoxy them. And now grab your stars and do the same thing. And then finally add your decal. Now in hindsight you should probably do the decal first and then work your 3D um, elements around your decal but like I said before I didn't like the way that I had it placed before so I had to rip it off and so here we are. <laughs> and finally it's time to epoxy. I did add a tiny tiny little bit of halo from PDB glitters into my um, epoxy here just to give it again some extra shine. I'm all about the shine on this one and be really careful to make sure to add just enough epoxy on your flowers. You don't want to drench them but you do want to make sure that everything is thoroughly covered and if it's easier for you go ahead and feel free to use a small paintbrush to get into those nooks and crannies that you may feel like you can't get to. and then hit it with some heat to get rid of any micro bubbles. 
And look at that. Look at how freaking gorgeous this is. It's so full of shine. It's just got enough pop and pizzazz. It really gives off this sense of fireworks in the skies for me, but also really super feminine. I'm just really in love with this. Um, so I hope that you guys really love this too. I thank you so much for hanging out with me while I walk you through this tutorial. And I hope to see all of your flowers very soon. Catch you on the next one. Bye. If you love this video, be sure to click here to see our last video. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another tutorial. See you later. Bye.